Hi, I'm Jonathan Weinberg. It is uh, a few days after Groundhog Day and uh, um, in New Haven, and it is one of the, it is the coldest day of the year. We actually had a three degree temperature reading this morning. And it ain't a quick night out from man up. Uh, we're trying to keep warm. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the Lamy 2000, which is one of the most popular fountain pens out there. And I've kind of resisted the mania for, for it. Um, when I was really getting into fountain pens again in, you know, maybe five or six years ago, I bought a... Lamy Safari, and I, I've talked about this before. This is my, I love the color yellow, so I love the way this pen looks, but the nib that I had on it um, when I got it, it was very scratchy, and I was like, why are people so into this pen? And I hardly used it, and then in the last year or so, I've gotten a bunch of other Lamy pens with medium nibs, and I've just had discovered, oh, this is really a great pen, and uh, it was just I had a, a lousy nib. And so I kept thinking, oh, what is this Lamy 2000? Is it really that great? And of course, here, here it is. Um, it's, a, it's a nice looking pen, um, but it's not that great. I mean, there's nothing that unique or unusual about it. And um, anyway, I finally, finally bought one of these. Um, there's a lot of hype about this pen. Um, it, there, there's a lot of sort of vague discussion about it being a Bauhaus design. And um, also uh, people say that it is in the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art or it's on view in the Museum of Modern Art. I suspect that it is possible that at some point or other it was in an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art. But it doesn't appear to be in their collection, at least when you do a, a search on it in their collection. And I've never seen it in the Museum of Modern Art. And I've heard it reported that Lamy itself doesn't say that it's in the Museum of Modern Art. So I think that's not true. In terms of the Bauhaus, it was actually designed in 1966. The Bauhaus, when we think of the Bauhaus, we think of design in the 20s and 30s and the Bauhaus actually goes into exile because um, the Nazis were not very big on the on, on the Bauhaus and it moves to the United States to Harvard really that's what people tend to say with people like Walter Gropius and um, so it, it really comes way after the Bauhaus so you could say well it's inspired by the Bauhaus part of the Bauhaus legend has to do with the relationship of this pen to another pen that people adore, which of course is the Parker 51. And you should say a, a style, well, I don't know if style of pen, but a whole sort of genealogy of pens, because there are many different versions of the Parker 51. This is an aromatic version. I suspect that it's from maybe the 60s or 70s. I just got it. And I don't think there's any doubt that the design of the uh, Parker 51 um, has had a big influence on the design of the Lamy 2000. And the Parker 51 also has a lot of hype in terms of its relationship to Bauhaus. Um, that has probably to do with the fact that um, Mahali Naj, who was a member of the Bauhaus and a very important designer, ended up being a consultant consultant for Parker, but he didn't start consulting with Parker until after the Parker 51 was already created. So the Bauhaus idea is the idea that form follows function, that, uh, that designers should, should create things that are both beautiful and um, can be mass produced, right? Um, and so that often led them to make design things in metal and new plastics, to use the latest um, technologies to create things that were both beautiful and functional. And I think there's no doubt that both of these pens are in that um, 
tradition. There also was a sort of notion that is in modernism itself throughout the 20th century, but particularly in the first half of the 20th century, that ornament was problematic, right? And so one was supposed to design with the idea that every aspect of the design would be functional. Um, and that uh, res resulted in a kind of, uh, as Mies van der Rohe um, said, less is more aesthetic, which I think both these pens actually fit into. Now, the actual designer of the um, Lamy 2000 is Gerd Alfred Mueller, and as I say, it was designed in 1966, and it very much using a polycarbonate um, called Macrolon that was developed in the late 50s by Bayer. So it's using new um, materials, and it's very sleek looking. And actually, you know, it's interesting because it really relates, I think, too, to a kind of space age aesthetic of the 60s, right? This is the time when we're, when uh, moon launch is happening and uh, people are also thinking, one can think unconsciously maybe, about missiles and nuclear arms and all that. So all of that is going into, I think, this kind of design where you get something that really looks like um, it could be a spaceship in a science fiction in a science fiction movie. And I think all of that is going into the Lamy 2000 design. But the Lamy 2000, I don't think would be so successful if it wasn't for the fact that the nib is so beautiful and writes so well. Um, it, it's hard to describe, but it has it is both smooth and it has just the right amount of feedback, at least in my opinion, so that you feel the pen sort of gliding across the paper, but you also feel a kind of uh, response, right? So it's not just sort of slipping across, it just go, glides across. And, and so the nib, it's all about the nib. It also, and there's a lot of discussion of this um, on, on the web about how satisfying it is, the way in which the pen um, closes. It doesn't screw, it clicks together. Um, that's very nice. The material itself is really beautiful in the hand um, and doesn't pick up um, fingerprints, which is nice. It doesn't, you know, the other thing that I have to say, which is why I didn't buy it, is that when you see it um, reproduced in a photograph, it has a kind of dull look to it. And, um, and, and it's sort of old fashioned look now with the silver and the black, but in person, I don't feel that way at all. In person, it just looks right. Um, another nice thing, it has a little window where you can sort of see the ink. Um, that, you know, in terms of design, I wish that that were uh, bigger. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that it's a piston filler. And another really beautiful thing about the pen is the way in which the actual turning knob is so uh, beautifully... Um, crafted that you can barely see it, um, the line when you're turning it. Um, and, you know, in general, there's a very beautiful craft to this pen in terms of the way it's finished. So um, that's another thing that, that one admires in it, that it, there's just a kind of attention to detail that through all these years they've been able to maintain that. Um, Lamy has been really true to this design and they've made certain variations on it, but they st they're very understated. Like you would have, you would imagine uh, a cool thing to do would be do a demonstrator version of this pen, but as far as I know, they've never done that. There could be all kinds of versions of this pen in the way that the Parker 51 has done that. And Lamy has been very restrained. They. They've come out with different anniversary editions. They have a, a stainless steel version of this that's in production. But by and large, this is sort of the classic pen. And it's not cheap, but it's also not super expensive given the fact that it has a 14K gold nib. So usually you can get it around $200. I was able to get this for around $170. So it is not a cheap pen, but it's not a super expensive pen. And I think 
for the quality of the writing, um, it's worth it. So, um, you know, again, you know, if you know my reviews, I don't spend a lot of time like measuring the pen or weighing the pen, but you can see, and I will show a comparison to the Safari or the uh, uh, Pilot Metropolitan, that it's not a huge pen and it's not a small pen. And that's the other thing, it feels really nice in the hand, so you can really write with this for a long time. And it has, it just is a classic. Um, so uh, as usual, I'll do, a, I'll do the uh, classic writing sample. I wanna say that I've been writing with this pen for several weeks, so I really know that it writes well. And then I did a little drawing. Now, it's not, the nib itself isn't very flexy. Um, I mean, it's not flexy at all. It has the tiniest bit of line variation. And I, I got a medium. Um, there's a big, a lot of controversy about that because the medium is pretty thick, almost a bold, certainly uh, not anything like a Japanese medium. And, you know, there's a big issue when you're buying the pen, should you get a fine or a medium? Um, I think the medium works really well. I like to write with the medium, but I was surprised at how much I enjoy drawing with this pen, even though there isn't much um, line variation with it. Um, the It has just a coin, I think it has something to do with the feedback, and I feel it's quite expressive, and I even enjoyed doing cross-hatching with it, even though it doesn't do fine cross-hatching. So, uh, as you can see, I'm very pleased with it, and I really actually think that it does make sense that people love this pen so much. And, uh, you know, it, it's just, you know, I think of the fact, actually, that it's almost boring, you know, to say, oh, it's the same old thing. And I kind of would say to Lamy, um, make more variations of this pen. Do, do it, the nib is fantastic. Put this nib on different kinds of pens and um, I think you would get, you would expand your market. Um, uh, okay, so I will do the writing sample and I will do a drawing, another drawing of Severus, my uh, beloved cat, a uh, very quick drawing. As always, please subscribe. I'm slowly but surely building, building up a little uh, subscription base, but um, I really could use your support. And if you enjoy my ramblings, uh, press that subscribe button. Thank you. So <clears throat> I started printing again because um, my handwriting is just better when I print. And uh, as I say, it writes very smoothly. It's fairly wet, uh, not too wet. And uh, it has just a slight line variation. And uh, writes very nicely, no skipping. And it's just a lovely pen, not really any reverse writing.